All right, guys. So, turns out I got tagged in one of these uh, 54321 um, videos. So, my buddy uh, John over at Latherhog tagged me. Uh, if you guys haven't checked him out, you really should. He makes, like, some of the best content, I think, um, these days for the shaving community. And as well as he d dives into fragrances quite often as well. So definitely check out John at Latherhog um, on YouTube. Uh, good dude, and thanks for tagging me, buddy. All right, so let's get into this. I'm going to start off with five of my favorite shaving soaps here. So these aren't particularly from 2019. These are all time, um, and they're just kind of all over the place. So let's get into it. Starting off my, my first one here. I went with my favorite barber shop. You know, this is a shaving hobby. I feel like you kind of got to have a favorite barber shop. And uh, I don't see this one that often, so it, it was definitely, I felt like I had to give it a shout out, you know. This one is West of Olympia's Pride. Um, West of Olympia is from Washington State, which is where I'm from. Um, but the Pride series here, the Seven Sins collection, um, is just an awesome soap base um, and nothing but good sense from what I've found. Pride is probably the most complex but also stays traditional barbershop. Um, I really enjoy this one. Sadly, he's not making soaps right now. Um, hopefully he makes a return in the future. But if you see it on the BSTs, don't hesitate, guys. This is a great barbershop. <clears throat> so that's number one. The second one is uh, very special to me because I thought it was unobtainium. And I thought that I would never get it. Um, I pretty much lost hope. It didn't seem like people were really getting rid of it. I don't know if it was small batch or what. I know it was a one and done. But, uh... I heard it was polarizing. I thought I had a chance, but I never, I could never find it. Luckily for me, my buddy was looking out for me, Jack from the virtual groom room. And uh, he gifted me this soap here. West Coast IPA from Tallow and Steel. Um, this is a awesome soap. Uh, and it really, it really kind of digs into sort of my personality here. I live in Washington State, and particularly, I live in the Yakima Valley, which is known as the hop capital of the world. The Yakima Valley is known for its agriculture, and we produce about 80% of the entire world's hops. Um, now, the reason this one was polarizing is because I think people were expecting it to smell like an IPA, like like a beer, you know? And I feel like it kind of falls short of that mark, but what I enjoy about it, and maybe others don't, is that I feel like it encapsulates the hops more than a beer. It's a better representation of hops than beer, in my opinion. And um, to me, it just, it has this, it, it has all the citrus notes that are common in a lot of hops so you get really bright citrus and then it has this dank resinous um like body to it and that is where i feel like people kind of that's where the problem is with the people who don't like it with the people that like it they love it but the people that don't like it i feel like that's where the problem stems it's not really with the citrus, it's with that kind of resinous um, portion. But I love this stuff. It reminds me of home, to be honest. We have hop fields all surrounding the city. And um, I'm a huge craft beer guy. I drink IPAs daily. So yeah, this is special to me. West Coast IPA from Tallow and Steel. Awesome soap. <clears throat> Alright, now this one... I know a lot of people like this one, and this has been one of my favorites ever since I got it. No, nothing has really dethroned it. And this is Noir at Vanille 
from Noble Otter. This stuff is freaking awesome. Tea, strawberry, um, oh my god. It, I, I got the, when I heard the EDT was announced, I jumped all over it. Um, I, it, it was a blind buy, you know. Who knows the performance? There's no reviews prior on Noble Otter's EDTs. To take the leap of faith, man. Uh, I love, I love this stuff. Noir at Vanilla. I know it's a lot of people's favorites. Um, pretty much the majority of the community likes this one. And I love it. Noir at Vanilla <clears throat> from Noble Otter. Alright, next is uh, one of my favorite gourmand scents. Now, this one <coughs> also kind of has a uh, a beer theme, but I don't think it smells like beer at all. This one is Black Birch Stout from the club, the Shaving Shop Club, slash A&E. Um, Black Birch Stout, to me, it's like chocolatey, it's nutty, it's um, warm and dark. It It's kind of like like hazelnuts um oh, it it's fantastic uh my mouth waters thinking about this one man this, this is a fantastic gourmand scent uh, i know that's not everybody's thing but if you're into gourmands i think you owe it to yourself it to me and like i said i'm a big beer guy this smells nothing like beer this smells nothing like a stout um but as far as a gourmand goes it nails it. I, I like this one. Black Birch Stout from the club. <clears throat> now this last one here. This last one, uh, I slept on for quite some time. I had a sample of it. And I I had the opportunity to uh, to really fall in love with it pretty early on. And that sample got stuffed to the back of the drawer and forgot about. And then about two months before it got re-released, I uh, dug it out and I was like, damn, I feel like an idiot. Vespers from Bear Stern Man. Man, this stuff is fantastic. Um, as soon as I got done with that sample, I was waiting for the holiday season around the corner. Uh, Vespers, this nails it for me. And, and from the shave note, or from the scent notes, I would have never known. Um, to be honest, I wasn't up on, like, what's balsam, moose to sax. I just saw the cranberry and fern, and I was like, eh, you know, it could be nice. No. Fantastic. This is another one that I picked up the EDT immediately. Um, fantastic. This is... It, it nails the holiday, the holiday essence, but you bet your ass I'm going to be wearing this all year round. Um, it's, man, it's fantastic. I love this stuff. So that was Vespers from Bear Stern Man. All right, now we're on to four post-shave products. Um, I could have just picked my four favorite post-shaves or aftershaves, but they probably would have matched been the matching splashes to most of these soaps here so instead i chose post shave formats now one of my favorites is barbado especially when i don't have a matching splash barbado um not for the scent the scent is just kind of like a slap of alcohol like alcohol scent as well as orange peel to kind of make it not so bad but it only lasts like 30 seconds it's there and then it's gone the scent is no deterrent. Don't even worry about it. It's there and then it's gone. The performance on this is fantastic. It says on there, moisturizing razor bump therapy. It does just that. It It's plenty moisturizing. It leaves your skin feeling great. Um, and if you've had a rough shave, it does wonders of healing you and helping your skin bounce right back to being uh, good again. So Barbado, definitely one of my favorite uh, post-shave products. All right. The next one is one of my favorite aftershave balms. Um, and that comes from Zingari Man. 
Um, the Zingari Man Balm is lightweight. It soaks in quick. The, the post shave feel is wonderful and it's long lasting. To be honest, uh, I joke and, a, and a, I joke around with the maker Heather that this almost comes with the accompanying nickname, the best bomb in the game. Like, because I hear a lot of people on their shave videos, they'll say, and uh, today I'm using the Zingari Man Balm as my post shave. It, it's pretty much the best balm in the game and my favorite balm. And it, I've heard it so much that it's kind of like, that's what I call it now. The best balm in the game from Zingari Man right here. Uh, this stuff's terrific. <clears throat> Alright, next one will be one of my favorite aftershave splashes. And we're back at A&E and the club. Not only... Do they do these one-off badass presentations? Like this little decanter here with the cork top and the wax seal that actually has the club on it. Um, but just, it's classy as hell. And you can see it's that milky texture, that skin food that the community seems to be slowly transitioning towards. Um, this stuff's fantastic. The, the scent strength is normally from like six to ten um it lasts a while the most of peter's scents are fantastic he has plenty of offerings you're definitely going to find something that will suit your needs sooner or later and the the post shape feel lasts uh it's moisturizing and it lasts uh so favorite aftershave from the club a slash a and e next here is I, I was kind of running out of formats. I was wondering what I would do for the fourth one. <coughs> and uh, I recently got a product to the den that I've been very, very impressed by. And this is Good Oleo from Oleo Soapworks. This is a pure oil blend. This has no fragrance added. Um... Or at least I don't think it does. But if you could get a load of those, that ingredient list. I mean, that's nothing but skin food from top to bottom right there. Nothing but skin food. This stuff will, it, it keeps your skin feeling fantastic. I recently saw an article where the person writing it compared it to um, the sebum products. And... They said they are, they came to the conclusion that they are dead nuts the same um, as far as quality. Those are usually above 100. This is 25. It, I, I, it's up to you. You know what I mean? That That's all on you guys. This doesn't have no fragrance added. It is what it is. But if you just want bang for your buck skincare... And uh, making your skin feel fantastic after a shave. Good Oleo from Oleo Soapworks, guys. Check it out. All right, moving on. We're going to the three brushes now. <clears throat> now we're going to start off. Uh, I started off with a cheap Razor Rock um, brush that it actually looked real classy. <coughs> but then I took the dive, man, straight into the deep end, uh, blindfolded backwards and I, I I basically did a belly flop uh, I went straight for wolf whiskers now this isn't the one that I went with first but this was my second wolf whiskers and just get a load of this thing guys now I'm not trying to toot my own horn but I I participate a lot in my um, customs, I, I don't leave a lot for the artisan, like, for them to put their own input. I, I like to put a lot of my input in on my customs. <coughs> I told Peter, I, I usually draw the brush myself and then send the drawing to the artisan. I told Peter, I had to use one of his shapes, so there's that. But I told him I want the red and black 
swirl on the bottom and then a red cut in the middle with white and red swirl on top. And he said, I could do two colors. And I told him, I need three. <laughs> you know, and I, I, I went to the point where I was like, if you mess up in the process, I'll still pay you. Uh, no, no questions asked. But I want you to attempt it, please. You know, and he went for it. I also asked him for the white and red swirl. And he told me white and red doesn't work together. Um, it usually becomes pink. And or he says it, it, it washes out. And he said that he's had very little luck with it in the past. And to be honest, you don't see a whole lot of white and red swirls out in the uh, custom world. And I, that was another one that we kind of went back and forth with. Um, and I was pretty headstrong about it. And I, I told him, please, I'll, I'll pay for it if it messes up. Whatever the outcome, I'll pay for it. He went for it. And thank God it, it turned out. And the dude worked wonders, man. This thing is fantastic. Um, I sent him one of these blood knots from Frugal Shave, the synthetic. And it was just a masterpiece, in my opinion. From Wolf Whiskers there. Awesome, awesome brush. Next up was another custom that I did. And uh, this one was from an artisan that was doing something completely off the rails different. And this is my Luton Brushworks. Now this thing here, I hit up Luton and again, I brought my own creation to the table. I told him, can I get a three-piece bloodwood walnut, black walnut, and bloodwood, three pieces. He told me I've never done uh, a multiple-piece uh, brush before. They, it's all been of a solid wood pl blank, and I've never done anything like that before. And I, you know, I drew something up, I sent it to him. And I said, well, here's a fairly simple shape. It, do you think you could try that for me? And if you fail, you know, I'll pay you for your time. And no, no questions asked, you know, no problems. He did it. He pulled it off. This thing is an absolute beauty. My lighting in the living room is not really doing it justice. But the, the, the scars on it are freaking awesome. The character in this thing is awesome. The deep red is awesome. I love it, guys. So that was my Luton Brushworks brush. Next up here is from Turn and Shave. And this is probably one of my absolute favorites. I feel like it's simple. It's classic. Um, it, it, it's just, it's classy as all get out. I love that my light is actually getting the silver in the black because I was kind of worried about that. But it's a silver and black metallic on top and bottom and then a white and black marble in the middle with a nice little badger knot on top. This thing is fantastic, guys. It, Like I said, it's just classy, it's simple, um, and really just a timeless design. This was another one that I kind of took part in. He told me, you know, you could rummage through my designs. And uh, I, I, add, like, I added this little stripe on the bottom, but it's kind of more like a point. Um, but yeah, turn and shave. One of my favorite brushes right here. Turn and shave. Awesome, awesome brush. All right, two razors. Let me get a little uh, drink here. Kind of parched. All right, so as far as DEs go, this was, it was every bit of the hype that I was sold. Um, it, the Carve Razor, the Carve Stainless Steel Razor, this thing is an absolute functional piece of art. 
I have the uh, anodized aluminum open comb guard there with the stainless steel top cap and handle. This thing is freaking one of the best EEs in the game. You hear outpouring of love about this thing all over the community. Um, it's one of the smoothest and <coughs> and efficient razors that I own. Um, it really kind of just leaped to the top with my other favorite razors immediately. It has one of the best head geometries that I think I've ever came across. It has that kind of oversized um, guard there or bottom cap that really even though it might be efficient it really makes it smooth for you um if you haven't checked this out i suggest getting on that wait list and you you owe it to yourself it's every bit of the hype i believe and it's fairly reasonable for a top tier razor uh price wise the next one is probably my favorite favorite razor in the den just barely just i just barely edges out the carve but this is the Schick Golden 500. This thing, I think it, it looks absolutely amazing. Uh, the long handle I thought was going to be a problem for me. Not aesthetically, but just when I went to shave. I, did, I, don't, I don't have anything else this long. It, it wasn't a problem at all. This thing's lightweight. And it actually... It shaves very very smoothly um and it it just it has about a perfect medium aggression but it, it's so smooth sometimes i question if there's a blade in there you know it's one of those and i could really use this daily and i could easily i could easily um I could easily use this daily because I never really have any problems with it. I I just don't know what else there is to be said about it. This shit, Golden 500, and this is a special edition of some sort, the Golden 500, but I'm pretty positive the other razors in this design that aren't Golden 500s are the same exact geometry. So if you find one of these out there, I really suggest picking it up. You could probably get it for super cheap, probably under 20 on eBay or uh, Etsy. These things are fantastic. Uh, and just shicks in general. If you haven't gave shicks a shake, you really should. And uh, that wasn't intended. <laughs> All right, we're down to one. My one favorite blade, which was fairly easy for me. And that is Pole Silver. These are discontinued. <laughs> it's, a, it's a damn shame. But these pole silver blades, I feel like, as far as sharpness goes, they're a notch beneath uh, feathers. But they're on the higher end of sharpness. But they have a level of smoothness that I feel like feathers don't have. And some of the other like really, really sharp blades... They don't come with that added harshness. These are sharp, but they're smooth. And that's really what made them my favorite. It's it's quite a damn shame that they're not available anymore. Maybe maybe the uh the hunt for them and the hunger for them since their demise will make Pole Silver come back into production one day, hopefully. But Pole Silvers are definitely my favorite blade and um yeah, if you haven't tried these, I, I recommend it. Even if you just pick up a five-pack, they're, they're really, really good uh, little blades. So that was my five, guys. That was my five, four, three, two, one list. I hope you guys enjoyed it. All of those are really great products. It's always hard to narrow down your... Uh, favorite products when you have a lot of gear but these are just some standouts to me um any one of these i fully stand behind <coughs> so now comes the point where i'm gonna um 
recommend a couple more guys. I'm going to tag a few more guys to try to keep this thing going and, and get more opinions out there and uh, just get more people's favorite products so that they can show their love and spotlight on artisans that they enjoy. So I'm going to pick Chad from CD Shaven Murphy. Uh, if he hasn't done it yet, I'd love to see what some of his favorites are. Real cool dude. I recommend you check out his YouTube if you haven't. CD Shaving Murphy. Um, so that's my first one. And the second one's going to be Jack from the Virtual Groom Room. Uh, probably my best friend in this shaving hobby. Real good dude. Uh, another young cat like me. And he just has a lot of... Uh, he's, bur he's burned through a lot of product. He, he knows his shit. And um, I really respect his opinion in the game. And I would love to hear what some of his favorite products are. And uh, so Jack at the Virtual Groom Room. On YouTube if you haven't checked him out yet I, I highly recommend that as well um, so that's it guys I'm gonna end it here cheers drinking an IPA as we speak cheers and uh, have a good one to all you guys have a good weekend